Levi, de hecho. It's not Levi. It's not Levi. I remember when they were in training and they were all like, why are we learning hand-to-hand -hand combat? And I was like, yeah, they'll probably fight human enemies at some point. <laughs> Little did I know how important that was. Crushing Blow, 57th Expedition Beyond the Walls, Part 5. This amazing arc continues. Maybe Eren just hasn't learned how to do it yet. He's sort of an amateur titan. Yeah, she has advanced skills. Right. Erwin <laughs> is really good at thinking outside the box. He's way outside the box. You poor kids, so full of hope. Speaking of thinking outside the box, Armin is always ahead of the curve. This whole thing is making me question a lot of my assumptions. Like, my thinking about it before was something along the lines of, at some point, someone made a plan and did something that set this whole thing in motion. But what I wasn't considering was that it's like an active process that they're currently shaping now. Basically, the fact that they're adapting their plans is surprising to me. And also is a lot cooler, because now it's a battle of wits more than before. What I just said about events being set in motion, that could still be true. It could just be like the people who are operating now just became aware of that and are trying to like facilitate it continuing or something like that. I don't know. Man, Gunther. I get the feeling that Eren is not really the one in danger though. Damn, look at Petra. Yeah, we don't know what the limits are. Wow. And it starts all over again after all that. That's insane. I mean, I feel like at this point... Oh, no, no, no. It's a huge change for Aaron in these episodes. He's so different. Wow, they're actually doing really well, but she can regenerate. I really hope they don't die, because I would like Aaron's fate to be rewarded. That is really smart. Now they can go for the neck. But also it has armor. Yeah. Power of faith, yeah, I was gonna say. That's especially nice to see for Eren just because he's been carrying the weight of the world on his shoulders this whole time. I had that thought back when he was carrying the, the giant boulder. He looked like Atlas. And this is a really critical moment, right? Because now he's actually placing his faith in people. But he's naturally wary of that because he's just been let down. Or he feels let down by the whole world. So I feel like in those moments you're extra vulnerable because you're sort of looking for it to fail, right? Like you're looking for things to validate your own worldview. So the three of them coming through like that is awesome. I like this arc for Eren. I think it does really important things for his character. He's changing a lot, but it feels deserved, right? Like, it's not like he just decides, hey, you know what? I should have more faith in the world. The other people earn his trust. And like for me as a viewer, I feel like they deserve it. Like the leadership and the soldiers, they're awesome. <laughs> oh no. They just led me on. Why do I keep falling for this? No, take Ula instead. This is like really, really highly skilled man titan. <gasps> no! Petra? Armor. I am upset. <laughs> I mean, Ula, whatever. 
Petra. She was the best of them. I was just saying how this needs to work for Aaron. Why'd you have to take that away from me? Everything was going well. Well, actually, nothing was going well. I just led myself into thinking that. Man, Aaron's in some real danger now, psychically. Is he about to become a Titan? Yeah, wow, this should be crazy. Titan on Titan battle. But he's not as good. He's not ready for this. I love this. I love this midway midpoint card about horses. <laughs> Among all the craziness and sadness, it's like, would you like to know about horses? <laughs> Did you know their top speed is between 75 and 80 kilometers per hour? <laughs> uh, thank you for the trivia, Attack on Titan. I appreciate it. And thank you for killing everyone I love. Oh. Yeah, you're no match. Not even close. But what he lacks in skill, he makes up for in rage. But it's unclear what her objective is, so it might not even be hurting Eren. I mean, she might not even be able to fight back. I don't know. Ugh. It sucks. Uh. Yeah, he's he's internalizing it the way I thought he would. She's not really fighting back. Uh, this is a really hard dilemma. It's really painful. He might be right. You know, maybe he could have done something. But like Armin was saying last episode, that's sort of not the point. Everything is clear in hindsight. Things could have gone any number of ways. And as Levi said, you can't predict the future. Like anything can happen. You don't know. So I think the judgment of like what was right or wrong in cases like this where there's total chaos is like, well, what did you believe in and what did you stick to? This is going to sound weird and maybe counterintuitive, but I think that you can do the right thing and still have things turn out wrong. It doesn't mean it wasn't the right thing. Placing his trust in people who cared about him and people who are experts at this was not necessarily a mistake, you know, because he was operating from a place that actually I think is a good place to operate from. It's just that they have an enemy who doesn't have any scruples. And so they lost logistically. But I don't think that means that his faith was wrong. I don't think that he made any mistake in that in that way. I think that long term, the way that they're operating in terms of having trust in each other and like not blind trust, but trust based on their accurate, in my opinion, assessments of each other is going to get them farther than if it just devolves into like every man for himself or it's all my responsibility or things like that. They were all heroic and they died nobly and unselfishly. It's just that things happen, like things go wrong all the time. That's just like part of life. So in my opinion, the principles matter more than the result in this situation. Although it's easy for me to say as an observer because I'm not like getting smushed into a tree. Your choice didn't kill everyone, the Titan did. You didn't kill anybody. Right. I mean, it's 100% this Titan's fault. It was never going to happen that way. Just trying to avoid fighting, it seems. I'm getting real Eva vibes from this scene. Oof. And what's crazy to think about is, like, since I don't know what's going on, it could be that she's actually trying to help him, and maybe she has good reasons for doing this. I don't know. Who knows? Like, she's not just a mindless killing machine. She, like, has an objective. And she's thinking, you know, thinking about things critically, it seems. And she came here for Eren for a purpose. Did she just knock his head off? But that won't kill him. And Eren gets eaten for the second time by a titan. But he didn't get bitten, he just got swallowed again. I guess she's trying to take him somewhere private where they can talk. Just chill on my stomach for a bit. Mikasa, no, just let let it happen. Just let this happen. She's not trying to kill Eren. What if this is Mikasa cutting herself? Oh, she actually did some damage. Imagine Mikasa just beats her on her own. That would be such a Mikasa thing to do. Armor. Ultimate armor. Yeah. Yeah, 
Is she steaming? Is that from her or from like the residue? At this point, yeah, there's just nothing, like they've thrown everything at her. It's impossible. Just see what happens, I guess, I don't know. Oh my god, this arc is so much fun. <laughs> it's so good and so bad at the same time. It just hurts me. Petra's death, I think, is the most painful death I've experienced so far in this show. Because I really liked her, and I did not think they were going to kill her. The cadets I was sort of prepared for, and I was prepared for some of the survey corpses to die, but I didn't think they'd kill off three or four of them in the span of, like, five minutes. Like, they built up that whole crew, and then just, that's it. Gone. Petra was such a sweet character. Ula was not. But I also feel bad about his death. Because, like, what does it matter? You know, his pettiness, him trying to be like Levi. It just makes it all the more tragic that he wanted to be a hero. I'm envisioning like character arcs for Ula, like he's going to become more reserved, he's going to become more of a team player, he's going to have more assists as opposed to kills, but that is not in the in the picture. That's not in the agenda for the show. Ula is just out, as is like... How many of the Survey Corps are even alive at this point? 50%? This has got to be the worst expedition in a long time, if not ever. But Through the Pain is like gripping entertainment. Like it's just so much fun. This felt like one of the shortest episodes I've watched, just because there's just so many things happening at the same time. This is going to sound crazy, but I get a feeling of like sweetness from the, the Titan. Even though she's killing characters that I like and wrecking my heart, there was like a little bit of tenderness for Eren. It's got to be Mikasa. It's got to be Mikasa, right? It has to be Mikasa. Who else could it be? Who else loves Eren? Like Mikasa loves Eren. Another Eren, maybe. Eren loves himself some Eren. One great feeling these episodes convey is just like a total loss of control. We respect Erwin. We know what he can do. He had this great plan. It it almost worked, but things fall apart. It's pretty clear anyway that she's not going to hurt Eren. She wants him for something. So all those lives lost were not that helpful. And there's no point sending more good after bad. Just, just take him. But as frustrating as this is, that's it for now. I'll see you guys next time for what I'm sure will be a wonderful, optimistic, and happy episode 22.